Swally, thank you so much for joining us. And you heard Greg Pelcott there say this this has gone wrong in the past. So my first question is, what exactly uh, does he want? And I'm talking uh, speaking of Kim Jong Un. And also, as these conversations continue, if they continue, how can we sort of decipher progress? That's a very good question. That's a question of the day. Uh, the North Korean leader or dictator wants basically to protect his regime. And he's measuring how much he's going to be paying for this. Uh, stopping the missile tests, he could do that. Uh, maybe starting to uh, redirect his program, he could do that. The thing where it would be his red line would be do not touch my regime. It's going to be a one-party regime. And that's the big challenge because there could be changes on the ground. North Koreans could be given possibilities and that could be risky for him. There was one uh, statement put out this morning in the word nuclear, f nuclear free, nuclear free mm. zone, peninsula, if you will. My question to you would mean that probably would include probably the 28,000 troops who are in South Korea to leave. And, and that's probably never going to happen. It could, but yes, at this point in time, the 20,000 troops are basically facing the million troops to the north. Uh, so it's really the task forces that we have in the ocean right. versus the missiles. So if you, if you look at it from a balance of power, if he disarm his missiles, then we could redeploy. If he withdraw or lessen his mobilization in the north, we could also redeploy. But my major point, the question that I have here is, how do we measure that he's going into that direction? We have the military, military monitoring, of course, surveillance very strict but also the most important factor will he allow his citizens to visit the south yeah. that would be a major uh, uh, game changer yeah I can't even imagine that I'm sort of curious on, on uh, who has the upper hand going into the meetings and as we go into the meetings would he sort of tread lightly maybe not ask for sanctions to be relief right relief immediately is would he start sort of lowering the bar if you will normally he will ask for everything he wants to ask for and then of course the power maybe. of, Nic of he Nic read art of the deal maybe yeah maybe <laughs> it translated to him but remember there is also china behind him he has been prepped by the chinese during his visit so they will be basically doing the larger negotiation with us with the united states and uh, he will be part of that negotiation basically before, before you go, I do want to shift to sort of a larger foreign policy outlook. Obviously, it was a big week at the White House. We saw the French president. We saw the, the German chancellor. What is your takeaway from this week on, on where, the, where we stand in the world? Well, basically, the two leaders, European leaders, are, we're here for one specific issue, the Iran deal. It's not a secret in Washington right. anymore. Uh, they feel that the president and his administration are heading towards withdrawing from the deal. They feel that there is a majority in Congress and in the American public who do not trust the deal. So what they're trying to do, to do is to convince the president, look, we have an alternative for you. We could add to the deal. We could have another deal. But do not let go of the deal before having the alternative. I think the president's position is, first, I was draw from the deal, but I'm ready to renegotiate. So that puts the pressure on them at this point in time. And he's making that decision on May 12th. He is making a decision on May 12th formally. I don't know if he made the decision already. Right. That's up to him. All right. Well, Wally, thank you so much. Very interesting. We appreciate you coming on.